Hey, Tor, can you hear me? I got it, yep. Hey, Tor, good to see you. So, how's good life? Good to see you, too. Fantastic. So, yeah, um, I am in touch because, uh, obviously, there is uh, a bit of rumble going on. The uh, situation in the Reykjans uh, Peninsula, on the Reykjans Peninsula, looks towards, uh, yeah, looks, it's gearing up towards another eruption. Uh, initially, uh, the Met Office said it might be towards the end of February, maybe early March, but uh, you feel that it might not actually work this way? It might be a little sooner than that, is that right? Possible. 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 Go on, tell me more. So, if we... Uh, share this here we can see that there's really not much going on in the seismicity but the seismicity you know is quite calm between events and right before the events start you know we have a pickup in the seismicity maybe like in the last eruption it actually was what 20 minutes before but normally it's kind of an hour to an hour and a half but what what is the what i'm concerned with and what is sort of a Suggesting to me that we may have eruption maybe somewhat earlier is that is the uh, uh, inflation or the, the rise of the land. And we can see here the, the you know, the, uh, uh, the story of, of this, these episodes. So here's the 18th of December eruption, land started to rise. And, and as we approach the eruption, you can see the the inflation is slowing down a little bit. Yes, I can, yeah. And then it dropped down here is the uh, 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 14th of January. And then that was rising and, and it started to slow down a little bit and get 8th of February. And now it's starting to slow down again. Yes, and it seems to be a little bit of a pattern here that it uh, comes up and then it goes down after the eruption. And now we are actually higher than, um, well, any of the other eruptions. Now yeah, yeah, we are is... higher, but you can see this is kind of a more convincing sort of a slowing down, right? Yeah. And so maybe we will get the eruptions slightly earlier than, than anticipated. Because so, uh, uh... two... Two or three days after the uh, you know the the inflation starts to slow down, we've had eruptions in the past. Yeah, so it could be um, late weekend, early next week, uh, instead of end of next week, which was the initial prediction, fifteenth yeah. uh, of February by the Met Office. Well, other forecasting and uh, yeah, yeah. The, this uh, okay. Now, what do we have to expect? Uh, will it be a very different eruption, or will it be one of these short pulses again? Because looking at the inflation pattern, it seems that it's a bit like a, a pot with a lid on that boils over a little bit and then it goes down and boils over a little bit, it goes down. It doesn't seem to be a buildup of a huge system that then leads to a giant explosion. No, and this is, this is we have to remember that this you know, shallow magma storage zone underneath that tank is be quite small. And, and when it you know, reaches sort of a the 10 million cubic meter level, it lifts the lid, lets the magma out. We have an eruption. It seems to drain fairly rapidly. That's why we get such a high discharge at the beginning, you know, several hundred yes. cubic meters per second. But because it's such a small volume, then you, you drain that volume very quickly. So the eruptions are always very short or on the order of one to three days. The overpressure is gone very, very swiftly yeah. because it's not a large eruption. Yeah. Uh, let me share something with you. Uh, some of the students and myself, we tried to summarize um, the, uh, the, the possible views we could have on the plumbing system. Can you see my screen? Yep. <clears throat> so, yes, I mean, this is just a summary there. We have a bloom fed magmatism in Iceland. And this is uh, looking at this particular area here. We have the Reykjans Peninsula out here. This is maybe the central Iceland uh, bloom supply. And here we have the different systems on the Reykjans with Fakradalsfjall here and Svartsengi here. And <clears throat> trying to understand what happens in this red box, we have these three possible scenarios I can think of at least. And this was the early model put forward already in 22 by some workers that we have a mantle reservoir potentially at the crossed mantle boundary. And we're feeding directly up possibly with some 
intermittent storage, but uh, mainly feeding it directly from the mantle. The other option, and this seems to be what uh, more people seem to favor right now, certainly our geophysicists seem to think this is the better way of looking at things, is that there's actually some larger reservoirs in the lower crust that maybe 10 kilometers and some shallow reservoirs here in the yeah. upper crust that, I don't know, three to five kilometers. And that these are the ones that actually feed the eruptions that this is the little systems that over pressure. Let's see whether we can zoom in here. Yes. So that uh, these little systems get over pressured and that causes the eruption. Yeah. And then, of course, you could conceivably think about a larger lower crustal reservoir, this one here, but uh, still some shallower ones that actually feed the eruption. But if this one was correct, you could even think of fingers coming up at several volcano alignments or volcano systems along the peninsula. Yeah, I, I hope I that's not quite true, but what's your feeling? I, I favor the larger sort of a, a deeper magma storage zone, sort of an axial reservoir, if you like, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, mainly because if you look at what has, you know, the, what has been sampled and analyzed, of lava flows from the Reykjanes Peninsula, which is actually quite extensive. Yeah. Like, you know, Mary G and, and, and co-workers did in, 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 in the, uh, right around the millennia and, 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 and um, later other people have added to, to, to those studies. And, but they all uh, show the same thing is that there is some variability in magma composition across the Reykjanes Peninsula, but it's all, magmas with the same sort of a DNA pattern. Okay, I see. <clears throat> they, 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 they all, you know, you can you can easily see that they're related and they, and most most of them are most likely related by fractional crystallization. So you even you though would... even though magma mixing does come into play as well, but but exact process is, is irrelevant. It's it's basically there is no difference in magma composition from Reykjanes to Blaufjord. I see. Okay. So uh, that's very interesting, of course, because uh, if that holds true also for the future eruptions, then indeed uh, the assumption is we have some larger it, system. It, it may not hold true for the future eruptions because something has changed. But this is the, you know, the existing record. This is what came up in previous erup eruption periods. Yes, but uh, the current eruption material at Svarts Engi... Um, that, is, a... that is more enriched and what has erupted previously on the Reykjanes Peninsula, both what came up in Fardafjall, if we exclude the first sort of five weeks, uh -huh. um, or even less than that, first three weeks or something like that, um, the, the magma that has been erupted since 2021, the bulk of it is more enriched than any other magma that has been erupted on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Mm. And the only system or yeah, system, volcanic system that I know of in Iceland that may that seems to have produced similarly enriched basaltic magma with, with similar magnesium content or magnesium numbers is Askia. Mm, I see. So but that that would then almost imply that you need to have some deep change. It's uh I mean, um, a, a this is almost like a arrival of a new magma type or something like this. I mean, uh, there can be a reservoir under the Reykjans, but uh, we're talking about some fundamental difference. Yeah, also I mean, the way... this, this reservoir, which is under Reykjans, has, with, used to ho hold the old, old magma. It, it's probably a very long-lived system, has been filled in with new type of magma, okay. more enriched yeah. magma. And it is, is, is at least one possible interpretation of what we're seeing. And and if you think about Iceland as a whole, and, and we know that the center of Iceland is rising, mm -hmm. and, and it's generally been explained by uh, ice melting. Yes. But if you really look at it in detail, that it, there is no evidence of uh, a la land rising specifically around like glaciers like Hofsjökull or Langjökull, which are also melting. Yeah, so if, they, if they are melting as much as Vatnajökull, why wouldn't the land then, even though the amplitude might be smaller, why wouldn't the land be rising there as well? And it's not. 
And of course, the other thing is that if you have glaciers, uh, there is a pressure on the entire landmass. Of course, there's fractures and things, but mm -hmm. you would expect that this has a wider effect. Than... So, so I, I look at it as a possibility that actually there's a renewed activity in the mantle plume. Yes, that, that would be the consequence that we are talking about what people have invoked for Hawaii or the Canaries, that we have actually different blobs coming up with a plume and they may yes, be of and, different and, and, fertility. And it could be, you know, sli you know, slightly more active, more material kind of so things inflate a little bit more and, yeah. and it, 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 it's probably not a completely steady system throughout geological time. It probably is, is, is sort of a fluctuating somewhat. So I think it's, you know, and, and and but if that is true, and this is why I think it's worth looking into this, because especially of, of this Andrews magma suddenly coming up in Reykjanes, that is a kind of a, 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 a big change in fundamental observation, isn't it? I was just about to say, if that is true, uh, then it's not just a reawakening of the Reykjans. This would actually potentially even mean that we have heightened magmatic activity in Iceland in general for quite some time, for, I don't know, tens, hundreds of years potentially. Mm -hmm. So this could be a big game changer then, that we are only seeing the first impressions of this new material pushing yeah. up. Yeah. And uh, whoa, that that is even bigger than, then it's not just the Reykjans having a, a rhythm, but actually this could mean that uh, this could translate into the center of Iceland as well. Whoa, uh, big thing. Uh, let's see. I think obviously we need to do more. Yeah, tests, yeah, yeah. No, but, it, uh, it, it, it's an indication, yeah. possible indication of what one would say right now. But this is why I think it's worth looking into it. Yes. Well, and, we have to hypothesize and we have to test these hypotheses now. But yeah. certainly the um, the more enriched chemistry of the recent eruptives, apart from the very, very early 2021 ones, uh, that they are certainly more enriched than what we see in the geological record on the records and that is something and also if you, if you look at if you look at um, other system including Bardabunga, yeah this is more enriched than that i see okay i hadn't thought about it this way but yeah okay well then um you may have a point there that is certainly worth an investigation let me quickly come to the uh, situation in Grindavik now, more, uh, you know, from the big geodynamic picture to the more societal picture. Uh, people are back in Grindavik, at least some people are back, I understand, and some activities are back. Uh, Blue Lagoon is open again for bathing and sparring, and uh, yeah. I uh, I also understand that there there's activity again in the port. Uh, fishing is, is back alive. Uh, what's the story there? So the uh, uh, Blue Lagoon has been operating for most of this uh, uh, week that we've just gone through. And uh, I think even they have people staying in the hotel. Oh, okay. And uh, opening up for, for bathing and things like that kind of makes sense to me because we got these diverting walls and, you know, the, the place... It doesn't, you know, make it a hundred percent fail proof, but the chances of lava going and causing major damage and and and, and uh, uh, havoc at, at Blue Lagoon is is pretty small at the moment. So, uh, but I even so, I would be hesitant to. Uh, uh, stay there overnight. You need to be a little careful because indeed most of the recent lava uh, that was outpouring was diverted by the barriers, but uh, there was this little crack inside the uh, lava barriers close to Grindavik, which yeah. caused the damage in Grindavik. So the, then there may be a fracture, not the main fracture of an eruption, but there could be a subsidiary fracture that opens up inside the barriers. And, yes, and, um, and, and, this of and, course and... is an issue. And, and and an eruption can also start inside the barrier. We we can't yes. exclude that possibility. So that that is there. But I'm more concerned about things like maybe uh, uh, degassing, you know, of, of deeper seated magma, the CO two degassing, mm -hmm. and that's going to start to seeping up in the ground and and accumulating in low lying areas, which could be a potential danger. And and of course we could, you know, we we can still have 
earthquakes and fractures open up and things like that. And and they are also a hazard. So um, when people are asleep, they're not, you know, they're not really paying attention to things around them. So uh, it would take more time to get people out if you know if you have to start by waking them up and and get them moving. Yes, absolutely. And last eruption gave them about twelve minutes to evacuate. That's a very short. It's not good to be asleep, and um, I guess uh, I don't know how how valuable that is, but uh, I would prefer to to to, to sleep in a in one of the upper floors than in the lower floors because of the gas. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I mean it, it, it's if it, then again, it comes down to what people think is a, an acceptable risk, and yes. and that can di differ from one uh, uh, person to another, company to another, and 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 or units, and so and and uh, it relates to people's perception of things as well. What about the fishing now? In Grindavik, you know, Grindavik has been open up for locals, so the locals can go in. They're, and they're not, they won't be stopped, they, they, but they do th that on their own uh, 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 merit that, you know, they, they they are responsible for themselves. Okay, okay. Uh, they've opened up a number of the companies and so restaurant has opened up, uh, some of the fishing factories have opened up, both brought some fish in to the harbor yesterday, it's the first time since early January this year and um, and uh, what was it, 23, January 23, I'm not sure. Um, so the town is going, but I don't think any of the people that are actually working there now are staying in there overnight. Yeah, I think, they, I think they, they, yeah. they are all leaving, even though they can stay. I mean, that, that you know, they, they're, they're not going to be forced to, to leave, but they have to be alert and, and ready to evacuate if. The authorities so request and if you know if you have an eruption then they probably have to evacuate again and, and then yeah. they can go back when it's done so yeah the town is moving but uh it's not recommended for families with children to go into the town and uh they are sort of uh they're not they haven't told them that they can't but they strongly recommend that they don't that makes a lot of sense. I think once you have uh, children in involved, the evacuation time will likely be, you know, longer. It's uh, it's taking more organizational time. If you are, I don't know, a fisherman or so, and uh, you know, Grindavik is not that huge. You can potentially leave in a in a car quite quickly once you are in in the harbor. But yeah, I see that. So the risk yeah, acceptance, yeah, and, and, and we were all kids once, and we know what kids do. Oh, I know, you know, you, yeah, uh, I, I know from myself. So, and, and my kids, they, they, well. they, they don't, don't always look at you know warning signs and say, like, oh, no, we should not go there, but you know, yes, that, and that, uh, that's they the oh, let's go in there, yes, we exactly. There. There's a crack, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, the um, I, I heard some people say that uh, if the eruptions continue, even though they might not directly affect Grindavik. Uh, it may not be a sustainable solution in the wrong in the long run for Grindavik. What's your take on that? Do you think uh, if we have continued eruption on this kind of level for some time, that Grindavik may not have a long term future, or do you think it might actually calm down and recover and uh, things might get back I, to normal? I, I think it eventually probably will do that. You know, when these things are over, uh, what the time frame on that is uh, remains to be seen. You know. Social memory is short, mm. and so the you, harbor you, is very good, isn't it? And the harbor is very good, and the fishing grounds are just offshore. Yeah, I mean the, the boat that brought the 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 fish in into a harbor yesterday had a twenty minute sail. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that's it, very uh, good. And so you, there's a huge huge benefit for using the harbor and everything. Like so, I think it will be put into into operation again, but probably. I, I suspect it probably also will be in, in, in somewhat different capacities. And, and and also the way the town will evolve in the future is going to be very different from what people had planned uh, before this all, this all these events started. 
Mm. There, there might be some shifts in terms of how how people do things, and and I think also they may uh, uh, make sure that they have escape routes that are you know yes. more than one, more than two, and more than three. Uh, so it, it, there might even be uh, you can you can conceivably even think about a volcano adventure park that you can uh, stay in uh, Grindavik with the mild risk of a volcanic eruption there nearby. Some yeah, people yeah, might that, like that, the thrill, you know. So. That, that that is also a potential uh, uh, happening in in this in this case. So, but I'm also convinced that a certain fraction of the people that used to live in Grindavik are probably not returning. Yeah, that's what I think as well. It, and, it's and a personal they, they, decision. They just don't want to, you know, they, for them, this is just too much, understandably, but that, you know, and, and therefore they want to, you know, do something different. I understand that as well, and, absolutely. And, and, and they should be, you know, allowed to do that and should be helped as much as the others. I think so too. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so uh, last, uh, last, uh, last word here. So if I put my finger down and and push you, uh, so when is the eruption going to happen again? Is it Sunday or Monday or? <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know one can could be sneaky. Um, unfortunately, I think it probably is going to be Monday. Not a weekend eruption. And do you think it's going to be again at the Sundnukar uh, alignment? I think that is the most likely eruption. Yeah. And you see, this is one of the really interesting things that have come out of uh, these eruptions on the Reykjanes Peninsula is that we are reactivating specific volcanic liniments. And mm. this is not the first time that is done. I mean, this has been happening throughout history. So this rule of thumb that fissure eruptions only happen once in that one location is uh, starting to be a not very good rule of thumb. No, it might change. I, I, I see where you're coming from. So. <laughs> okay, Tora, thank you very much. I will be in touch on uh, Tuesday at the very latest. Yeah, yeah. Let's see how, how right you were. But I think it's obvious uh, a new eruption seems to be on the cards and it's a question of days here rather than anything else. And yeah. The, f the fact that we can make fun of uh, whether it's now Monday or Wednesday or whatever shows that uh, actually the science of volcanology has come a long way, that we're actually able to go down to that level of detail um, in, in forecasting these events. So I think um, this is actually, uh, on a broader picture, this is a big step. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. And this it, helps, it, is, it is a big step, and it's good that also we can sort of... Uh be reasonably relaxed about the whole thing as well. That's great. right, that there is no danger to life, so not directly at least. So, Okay, Tor, thank you very much, and we'll be You're in welcome. touch next week. Yes, have a good weekend. You too, all the best. Yes, good luck. <laughs>